Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, we finally, finally have the announcement that we've all been waiting for, it's finally here, and more, and more, so make sure to stick around to the end of this video, so then we go through every single little detail, because not just Maresca being announced at Chelsea, but there were two other, one predominantly important announcement that came out, and another one that concerns us Chelsea fans, so make sure you stick around till the end. Let's get cracking, because there's tons to cover, starting with the announcement itself, Chelsea have officially un uh, announced, they've not unveiled, yeah, we don't know where he is at the moment, if he's on holiday or whatnot, but Chelsea have announced Enzo Maresca, so without further ado, let's get into it, here's Chelsea Football Club. Welcome to Chelsea, Enzo Maresca, hashtag welcome Enzo, um, I gotta be direct here, that's all we got. There's no pictures, there's no announcement, there's nothing. It's just one announcement, one post. Welcome Enzo Maresca. I'm assuming he's still on holiday, right? So when he gets to the bridge, when he gets to Cobham or whatnot, we might get pictures and, and a press conference or something. I don't know, something will happen. But um, here's the details. Let's get into the details and everything that we've heard today because there's been tons that have happened today. We do have words from Enzo Maresca and we do have words from the owners as well. So let's get into it all. Here's the latest. Official, Enzo Maresca signs in as new Chelsea manager on five-year contract. Hang on, I've got to stop it there. Fabrizio, you've made a mistake. Come on, come on. Fabrizio, come on. This is, a, this is a, a, an amateurish mistake, this. This is, this, is, this is a baby error, this, you know? It's head coach. We don't do managers anymore. It's head coach, right? It's not manager, but anyway. Um, deal also includes an option until June 2030. One more season. Six staff members also join from Leicester as Chelsea will pay compensation fee in excess of 10 million euros. Story is confirmed. And he's going to look something like that. Um, but that is the details in regards to the appointment. Now, let's get into some of the tangibles and some of the things that have actually occurred. This is what Enzo Maresca has asked of Chelsea Football Club. This is from Kieran Gill saying Enzo Maresca has asked for Chelsea's data room to provide performance analysis on every player from youth level to first team after agreeing to take over as head coach. Also asked for information of every person he will be working with at the training ground. This is from the mail. At face value, this is a very good thing, right? Um, I hope in relation to the professional side of things, not the personal side of things, because you can't get data with personal things. You know, data on... Because he's asked, he's asked for data, apparently, as it's mentioned, for every player from youth level to senior level, right? In terms of performance. But he's also asked about information in regards to everybody at the training ground. <laughs> every person he will be working with. So again, this is, I hope, to do with the metrics that come with the job that they are delivering. I'll give one example. The medical staff, yeah? And some of the data and some of the intangibles that we need to understand in terms of, of, of the performance that they have in their roles. But on a personal level, yeah, he's going to have to meet everyone face to face and really understand who he, and who he does not have chemistry with. So that's that. Um, anyway, it's a good thing. It shows that he pays attention to detail. It shows that he is wanting to understand every single little thing that is occurring there. And at the end of the day, that's... <laughs> If he was manager, that is his responsibility, but he's head coach. So technically, that's not his responsibility, but therefore, it's nice to know that he wants to know all of those details anyway. So, good start. I say good start because we're going to come to one thing that I think many are going to be like, oh, no. Hold that thought. Here's what the owners had to say. Chelsea ownership group on Enzo Maresca. We look forward to supporting him and the rest of the sporting team in fulfilling their potential and our expectations over the years to come. He's in a highly gifted coach. He's a highly gifted coach and leader that we are confident can help fulfill our vision and competitive goals for the club. I gotta be honest here. Uh, that's that's the most generic statement I think you could ask. Well, like Chat GBT came up with that one, but <laughs> it is it is what it is. Um, I don't expect them to go into grave detail anyway. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. Enzo Maresca though. Now this doesn't feel like Chat GBT. Here's what he had to say. His words. His first words as Chelsea head coach. 
To join Chelsea, one of the biggest clubs in the world, is a dream for any coach. It is why I am so excited by this opportunity. I look forward to working with a very talented group of players and staff to develop a team that continues the club's tradition of success and makes our fans proud. Um, I would say, I wouldn't say it's continue um, the club's tradition of success. We've, we've stopped. It's now about getting back on track. So <laughs> hopefully, mate, you're the one to do it, please. That would be lovely. Um, but that is the reality of the situation. Um, we are trophyless and we've not won anything now for the past two seasons. And that's a record since 2003, I think. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. Um, but Enzo, hopefully you are the one to come in and steer us in a certain way. Now, this graphic that they did show, right, um, this is from Chelsea, acknowledging his playing career and where he's played, and he's played with some big clubs, and he's won trophies as a player, UEFA Cup winner with Sevilla twice, um, as, well, as well as other honours as well that he has won, um, including in Italy. But the coaching career, PL2 champions um, with Man City, was assistant to Pep when they did win the treble, and then he won the championship with Leicester. So, um, it's a good start in terms of a coaching career and how it could go. That's a good start, right? Um, the concern that myself and others had was, is this going to be too big of a step up? You know, he's got a couple of other steps to fulfill before he gets to the top end Premier League football. But Chelsea have put all their faith in someone like him. And like I said before, this is why I'm not looking at Enzo Maresca. I'm looking at the club. If anything goes right, I will say, Chelsea, fair play. You've nailed it. If they've got it wrong, oh boy, heads will have to roll. It's as simple as that. But Enzo Maresca, do the best you can, mate. We are completely behind you. And um, good luck. Simple as that. Now, in relation to Maresca, what happened? We got Mr. Percy from The Telegraph telling us exactly what had happened. Here it is. After promotion was secured and during a post-season trip to Monaco, it is understood that Maresca informed Leicester's board he was happy to stay. He rejected offers abroad from Sevilla and Porto and was heavily involved and invested in the club's future planning. Out of nowhere, Chelsea made an official approach on Monday, May 27th, and it soon became inevitable that Maresca would leave. So, I've said this personally before, and I think this confirms what my thought was. Um, he was never going to say no to a club like Chelsea coming in at this time. Absolutely no chance. This is why I said previously, Enzo, I would have done what you did. And this is why I am not going to blame him whatsoever in whatever happens going forward. It is what it is. Because the doubt is there. I'm not pretending like, oh, all of a sudden everything's okay. No, nah, I'm still concerned. But I will support him. I will back him. However, is this too much of a step for him? He has to prove otherwise. It's as simple as that. He has to prove otherwise. But I am legitimately concerned that this could be too big of a job. For now. Maybe later on, it would be okay. But is it too soon? Because here we're asking, not asking, we're demanding top four. Minimum. If not, I'm sorry. We have failed. You know, if we don't get top four, like I said before, Win Stanley and Stewart, I'm sorry you're gone. End of story. Uh, if it was up to me. If it was up to me. Unfortunately, for me, it's not. But my demand as a fan would be that. But the move that the club had made to get someone as inexperienced as Enzo Maresca at this time in his career is a huge risk. So this is why, look, if you pull it off, mate, my respect... And fair play to Chelsea. Respect for getting it right. It, with such a huge risk. I will say that if it comes to it and he gets us top four. If we don't, like I said, it wouldn't be a surprise to me. So let's wait and see what happens. That's all we can do. But Beth Maresca has my backing completely. I will support him and I hope he smashes it. And I'm looking forward to it. And I do think, I am going to say this... I do think he is going to build a good connection with all of us. I do think he will. Um, I've seen a few of his press conferences, interviews as Leicester manager. I went back and I looked at a few. 
Um, I saw his coach's voice. I saw his um, interview with Gilan Balagay. Um, I, I've seen a few things. I think he'll have much better connection than we did with well, Pochettino, that's for sure. I think any, I think out of all the managers we've had so far under this ownership, I think he's the one that we are going to connect with. But that connection comes with results first. It's not just words. Words don't mean a thing if the wins are not coming through the door. It's as simple as that. And it's funny because, and I'm going to come to this later, I watched Jose Mourinho's press conference today, right? The longest press conference we've ever seen, by the way, one hour and 36 minutes long. I don't think anything has happened at that, at that length ever in the football world before, goes to show. But he made one thing perfectly clear, and I think that was a really good point to make. Um, when it comes to projects, this is why I'm mentioning it, because we're all talking about a project and we're talking about a process and we're doing all of this. When it comes to the club and the owners and the directors and the manager and the head coach, whoever it is, the project absolutely applies to them, right? They need to make sure that they are all aligned and they're all trusting in the same thing, right? But he made it clear that the fans and the supporters shouldn't be the ones demanding a project. They should be the ones demanding and putting the pressure from minute one. And I completely agree, man. I completely agree. Because if the fans are not applying the pressure, who is? The club will do their absolute best to cling on and go, no, 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 we believe in this, we have to, right? But it's the fans that are going to let you know if they're happy or not. And that's where the pressure comes. And his point to that was that any player that cannot cope with the pressure of the Fenerbahce fan base does not belong at Fenerbahce. And I absolutely agree with that for Chelsea and any top club, Man City, Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, uh, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, whoever it is. If you're a big club and your ambition is silverware, I'm sorry, there is a certain level. And this is why my demand for this season is top four minimum. Top four, and we absolutely must win this conference league. There is absolutely no ifs, buts, or maybes in regards to that competition. I am sorry. Because the level, it, for, I'm sorry, for, for, for me, I reckon Chelsea uh, should be above the conference league. With all due respect, we are taking part in it and we've got to respect the competition, but we should be cleaning up. <laughs> we should. That's the demand that I have as a fan. And I think that we should absolutely keep that. Not go, oh, no, you know what? No, okay, yeah, let's just let's hang about and see what, what happens. Because if not, who's putting the pressure on? I honestly believe this is also part of the reason why we've ended up where we are. Because there are a portion of the fan base that I believe are just willing to just chill. It's like, no. Nah. Feel. Say something. Do, you know? And this is why I think it's absolutely imperative. We put the pressure. Enzo Maresca, good luck in everything, but this is Chelsea Football Club and we absolutely must hit this target. End of story. If we don't, we have failed. Fifth for me next season is a failure. Not having it. Not having it. We've waited too long. It's done. So... Let me know your thoughts down below. But that's um, Enzo Maresca and his, um, his words, his situation. Now, here's what Chelsea was struck by in relation to Enzo Maresca. Chelsea was struck by Enzo Maresca's enthusiasm for the vacancy as well as his vision for how he can help Chelsea recapture their elite status in English and European football. Okay. So this is where... Have they actually made a demand to Maresca that we must hit a certain level within the Premier League and we must hit a certain level in terms of European competition or that we must get Champions League qualification because that's where we should be? Well, I hope he's given all the tools to do it. Or I hope he is just the guy to do it that we maybe don't know about. Because like I've said, this is a huge risk. I don't think it's been done before. I don't think there's been a club that have hired someone who's from the championship or just been promoted from the championship or who's, who's not managed a top-end club before at European level that has got a top club Champions League qualification. I'm trying to think. <laughs> it's not happened to us. It might have happened somewhere else. It's not happened at Chelsea, that's for sure. So, 
You know, Claudio Ranieri, but he was already an established manager at that time. This is what I'm saying. Like, this is a, this is a really new realm that we are operating in right now. So, I honestly, I wish him luck and the club have to be right. This is where the pressure is on. The club have to be right with this. Let's wait and see what happens. Let the season commence. I wish we could start tomorrow. Um, but now we get to the little iffy moment of the video where I'm going, oh no, here it is. Breaking, Enzo Maresca has told Chelsea board he really likes Robert Sanchez. Sanchez expected to stay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling good with this one. I've got to lie. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I can't lie. I've got to be real. This is what Fabrizio went on to say too. Chelsea to stick with Petrovic and Sanchez this season. So this is an indicator that I don't think we're going for a goalkeeper. But what it does say is that we could have a situation where Sanchez is actually going to be the number one. And I'm sorry, I don't see how that's going, that's go, that's going to work. I, I Personally, I, I don't see it. If Maresca's got a plan and he gets Sanchez to play, great. But in terms of goalkeeping here, I, I don't want us to focus on this obsession that is in the modern day game now where on the, the, the absolute priority for the goalkeeper is to pass. If his priority is to pass, then sorry, you're not, you're not don't, don't go in goal. You're a defender, man. Come out and play centre-back. You know, the goalkeeper needs to have the attributes, the key attributes as a goalkeeper. If you want to have assurances in terms of moving the ball properly, make sure your back four or your back five or your back three, however you're going to set up, is at a top, top level. And make sure your goalkeeper is just good enough to pass the ball to the man that he knows he's got to pass to. That's it. He doesn't have to turn into Iniesta. <laughs> this is where I, I think there is an over-obsession, an expectation on what the goalkeeper has to do with the ball. Fix your defence. Get them to perform. Because last season, let's have it right, Petrovic was called upon and he delivered. He delivered at times where that defence was leaking. That wasn't a good defence that we had last season. Only up until the end when we managed to get Silva and Chalaba to combine together again. But prior to that, there were games where Petrovic was making crazy saves and contributing in ways where he limited the damage that we incurred last season. He limited the damage. It could have been much more if it wasn't for Petrovic. That's the prime aim for me as a goalkeeper. Are you there? He was there when the defence wasn't there. We, you have to understand as well, I, and I think most of you will agree here, Sometimes a very good defence can protect a goalkeeper, can make a goalkeeper look better than what he is, right? We've seen, we've seen examples of that. But we need to get to a level where the defence is top quality and the goalkeeper's top quality. And if that's the case, we've not got anything to worry about because the goalkeeper's job is to get the ball from A to B. After that, it's out of his control. He has to stick in between the posts. He ain't moving anywhere. So... As a goalkeeper, Sanchez worries me. I'm sorry. Blunders, when he had pressure put on him, he was committing mistakes. Some silly goals let in. Couple of worldies, I can't lie, but it's not good enough. Petrovic outperformed him. And for me, he's number one. Let's wait and see what plan Maresca has. Simple as that. But this, for me, a little bit of a red flag here about Sanchez. I would rather us go out and look for a goalkeeper than have to rely on Sanchez. But let's see. Let's see if Maresca can fix him. That would be, honestly, if Maresca can fix Sanchez, then we might actually have something very, very good on our hands. <laughs> so let me know your thoughts down below. Now let's get to some of other business. Here's latest in relation to one Chelsea player who, funnily enough, hasn't, has he even made a senior appearance yet? And I think he's about to leave. Here it is. Exclusive. Chelsea won't loan out Amari Hutchinson again this summer. Permanent deal only way. Chelsea would only consider bids around 25 to 30 million for Amari. Understand Stuttgart are pushing a lot to sign him and our favourites with more clubs in the Premier League, Ajax and Feyenoord also keen. He did get, um, well, he had a very good season whilst um, in the Championship. Funnily enough, 
um, with Maresca. And this is where I feel he was always going to be a player that was just going to come and make a bit of money. We bought him, I think it was for 10 million from Arsenal. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was 10. If it was less or more, you can let me know in the, in the comments. But we're immediately going to try and make triple that. Job done. And he's a homegrown player. So, you know, we paid whatever money we paid um, and we're going to be receiving a good amount of profit. I think that was the, always the aim. Omari Hutchinson was never going to be a player that was going to break into the first team. It just was not going to happen. He had a great season last season. He's got one year left on his deal. Chelsea feel they're going to sign him and make money. To be fair, if they're going to make money from a player like Hutchinson of that sort of amount, 20 million plus compared to what we paid, fair play, fair play. Because then it allows a little bit of leeway in terms of the transfer market where we got to make our business and we got to buy players. So let's wait and see what happens. Let me know your thoughts. Um, and we'll find out later if this was one player that we should have kept or if we were right to sell. Anyway, let's move attention elsewhere. Real Madrid. Comunicado Oficial. Mbappé. And here is the screenshot of the Comunicado, the biggest Comunicado that I think has ever been made. Real Madrid, um, this is in Spanish, but basically Real Madrid and Mbappe have agreed um, a term of five years um, and he will be joining Real Madrid, obviously, very, very soon um, in terms of actually showing up at the Bernabeu and, you know, being part of the club. But the deal is done, it's officialized. Mbappe is a Real Madrid player levels absolute levels we spoke about it yesterday it's just stupid it's just ridiculous and apparently they're going to keep Josselu as well so um it looks like their business is done for the transfer window and <laughs> holiday hasn't even started <laughs> it's incredible it's incredible now let me know your thoughts down below in relation to that Mbappe Real Madrid are moving on another universe like I said yesterday um one bit to clarify before we wrap up as I said earlier on Mourinho had his press conference his first press conference as Fenerbahce manager he did confirm unfortunately Jose why but he confirmed that he will not want or require Lukaku so Jose, good luck at Fenerbahce. I hope you smash it. I will be paying attention, but I really wish you could have taken Lukaku. Um, we got to turn to Antonio Conte now. Listen, mate, please take this guy off our hands because <laughs> he cannot walk back into Cobham. I'm sorry, I am not allowing it. He cannot walk back into Cobham. So I am relying on Antonio Conte here. If Napoli are not the ones that are going to take Lukaku, who will? Who will? Who's going to pay 38 million for him? I don't see it. Who? If anyone's got a suggestion, please let me know below. Please give me some hope that this guy is not going to show up at our football club anymore, please. <laughs> Honestly, I have, this, I have this nightmare in my head that Lukaku is going to like, be on the bench for the first game of the season and then he's going to come on you know, at the bridge. And it's, no, no, no. We can't have it. We can't have it. I'm sorry. We can't. I refuse. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And uh, once again, welcome to Chelsea Enzo Maresca. I'm um, looking forward to seeing how it's all going to go down. And I'm looking forward to seeing what work he's going to get done on the training ground and how we're going to get moved forward ready for the new season. So let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Do not forget to be here tomorrow for what will be, I think, a double upload. Things are now starting to kick into, into momentum and things are starting to really happen before the start of the transfer window that opens mid-June. I saw some of you clarify in the comments. Thank you so much. I did go back and check. And yes, we do have just under two weeks now until the transfer window opens. So it's going to kick off on Eunice Talks Football without a question as well as the coverage of the Euros that will be on here too. So make sure you guys are subscribed, hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded, and I'll see all of you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. In a bit, take care and peace.